In this episode of Mind Pump, you're going to learn how to get the best pump possible. Also, the guys have a lot of conversations in the middle, very interesting content. And finally, at the end of the show, we have four live callers who ask questions such as, hey, am I going to lose money if I start losing weight? Is that right? Money, money. I can't have money on my brain. Uh, if I lose too much weight, will I lose muscle? And also, if I do too much cardio, will I minimize my muscle growth, slow my metabolism, and stall my fat loss? All those are answered here in this episode and more. And finally, if you want just short clips from this show, go to Mind Pump Clips right here on YouTube. All right, enjoy the show. One of the best things you could do to increase the pump, in fact, one of the most powerful things you do to give yourself a better pump, is just drink more water. Lies. Yeah, I know. It's uh one, it's it's, it's not exciting. Did you give itself. that tip? I don't know, did I? I thought he did that tip already, Doug. He didn't do that tip already? I, I feel like that was a tip he, that I heard him say before. Well, he mentioned it. I know we've definitely talked about we've that. We've talked about one. Oh, it hasn't before. been a fitness tip? I don't think so. Uh, that but is actually a you know I've a done, big one. Yeah, no, I'm teasing you. It's actually a really good tip. Yeah, if you're if you're if you're trying to get a better pump uh in the gym, literally focus on drinking more water throughout the day and then see what happens. This I, I this for me was like mind blowing as an adult because as a kid I do the supplements, I do the carbs, I do the you know, some things help the pump here and there or whatever. But it wasn't it, nothing gave me a better pump like just drink like being hydrated, like being well hydrated going into my workout. So you know that I actually didn't piece this together until um I was getting ready to compete. So when I was what's that, twenty nine going on thirty was when that first, because I had never before that had I ever like really tracked water or like tried to push, yeah. like how much water can I take in? And because of that, I quickly found out that if I was going to drink a gallon or more of water a day, I would I would have just like getting ahead on protein. I'd have to get ahead with my water. And so I began like putting down like a half a gallon of water before my workout by like noon or whatever time I was working out. Mm -hmm. And then during the workout, I was thirsty, so that was always the next best time to get as much water I could take in. So, you know, I would by by noon between noon and two is when I'd be lifting. I would almost have a whole gallon of water now put in, and I mean, I just remember watching myself like double in size. It felt like, and I remember going like all these years of all the super pump products and creatine and all this stuff that I've taken, it was water. never have I felt Stay hydrated. this crazy of a pump. And I also noticed to add to that water combined with also like a nice little carb load before. So if I did like, you know, 70 grams of carbs uh, leading up to that, like two hours or so before that workout and had like a half gallon of water during the workout, I had the most insane pumps I ever had in yeah. my life. So, because I don't work, so because I work out first thing in the morning, right? So, what I do is I wake up and I drink two glasses of water. Now, I add a little bit of salt, or I use element T, because um, the sodium helps your body retain a little bit, and you need that. That sodium is very important for muscle contraction, anyway. So, I do that. Then during my workout, I don't know how big that that bottle is that you guys see that I use. What does that look like? Like the, the, the big the black liter? bottle? Yeah. Is that a liter? Yeah. I think it's a little over a liter. So I drink liter, two liters. Yeah. No, so I, drink, liter. I drink like yeah, one, one and a half liter. of those. Yeah. There you go, Doug. What does that look like? It's the, it's the, it's the mirror cup that we. It's 42 got, ounces. How much? 42. 42 ounces. So I go probably uh, 60 ounces because I'll do like one of those and a half through my workout. So I have the glasses of water before and I have, I have some sodium in there. Now these days I use element T water. I don't have the carbs because I work out fast because I work out so early. Yeah. And it's like, it's literally night and day. If I don't do that and I work out, the pump is so hard to get. I uh, My joints are more stiff. That's another thing too. I notice my joints are looser. Mm -hmm. My mobility's better. Energy's higher. Energy's higher. All because I'm more hydrated, which sounds so stupid. Because if you told me this as a kid in my 20s, I think it was just some old person telling me to drink more water. Simple things, yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like chew your food. It's like all oh, this stupid <laughs> shit that you just like blow right past it and you want to go with the cool, sexy pre-workout that you're slamming and feeling some effect for that right away. But meanwhile, if you just like stay properly hydrated and go in, like it, it's a total performance Bro, I want. I got, a, I got, here's a little speculation. I wonder how much of the pump that people feel from, because pre pre-workouts are full of stimulants, so that's right. for sure. You'll feel the stimulants. But I wonder if how much of the pump people feel is that they drink 16 ounces of water. So you that's got to contribute a lot. You know, 30 yeah. minutes before they work out. Yeah. And, and people, during your workout, that's probably when you, if, I've, if you're like me, like I drink a good portion of my daily water in the workout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and if you do that, then it's probably, 
contributing to your pump more than your then whatever it'll, else it'll explode or whatever pump product that you're <laughs> paying sixty dollars a jug for. You know, it's funny. I remember with oh. cli- with clients too, because I had um, I had like this wellness expert that worked in my studio way back in the day, and this is back when I was more just like trainer, right? Just fitness, you know, workouts, you know, proteins, fats, carbs, calories. She was a wellness person. I would always hear her talk about water to her clients. And I remember thinking like, whatever, not a big deal. But then her clients come back and be like, oh my God, since I've been drinking more water, I'm less stiff. I have less pain. I feel whatever. So I had a client who had like kind of this knee, this kind of stiffness in their knee. And we did all the mobility stuff. We did all the correctional exercise. Everything was looking good. And I said, you know, let's try tracking your water and just let me have you aim for, I don't remember what we started with. I think I had them start like half a gallon a day because they weren't drinking much. And they were, they came back and they were like, "It's magic! My knee doesn't hurt anymore." And I remember being like, <laughs> feeling like such an idiot because I had ignored this like obvious thing for so long. Yeah, yeah, joint pain. That was another one. Like a lot of my clients had the same experience where it was like they just increased the amount of water that they're drinking, and it was like this magical experience. I remember actually hearing you, Justin. I think say it first. I mean, you remember you were working for me, and I think I heard a client recommending or asking about energy levels and their energy. Levels levels being low and just, you know, getting them to drink water because they were so dehydrated that yeah. that was impacting yeah. their energy levels. And just simply by making it a point to drink water consistently through the day made a dramatic difference on their energy. Yeah. So it's fascinating how something so simple and basic can, it can actually well, have, have you, you say that. Cause like I was probably the worst supplement peddler in the group <laughs> yeah, of yeah. trainers that, you know, you had underneath you. Cause it was just like, Oh, just do this. This is what you need to focus on. And like, I was always like very much leading people away from supplements and like leaning on that too much and like eating real food. Yeah. Well, the good stuff you mean. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, it makes a huge Meanwhile, difference. Sal was, Selling it to special needs kids. He was needs doing kids. all of it. Oh, yes. <laughs> with barbecue sets and you know, everything uh, else. You, know, hit the, you hit a spot there. A sore spot. I sold a lot of supplements back in the day. And it was, I feel so bad, dude. I, there's one kid I sold $600 worth of supplements. <laughs> Six hundred dollars. And when he wow. comes back to return it, it sells him more. Well, no, 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 <laughs> no, no. You couldn't return it. It was one thing. There's no, there's no three day cancellation. Yeah, Remember the uh, memberships yeah. and training had it's six hundred dollars. He got all the different types of creatine. He got all. He got the men's multivitamin, the women's multivitamin. It was just so many different things. Yeah. And I look back. I was a kid. I was nineteen years old, and um, you know, I was just. It was just not good. It was just, I feel so bad. I hope if you're watching right now, contact me. I'll buy them back off. <laughs> <laughs> That's so much guilt I have. Yeah. Oh, I feel so bad, dude. This is so bad. Dude, we're young, dude. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I know. You make yeah. a lot of stupid mistakes. Yeah. But but no, it makes it makes a huge difference. It makes a huge... And it make, have you seen those pictures of people's faces when they hydrate? How 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 oh, different yeah. their faces look no. like it, it'll it, it makes fills you, their skin up it's like it's it's interesting it's anti-aging yeah. and i don't mean anti-aging because it makes you younger i mean not drinking enough water makes you look older so when you do when you finally drink enough water your skin just looks more vibrant it yep. makes a huge difference yeah. what's up everybody the giveaway today map split this is the advanced bodybuilder style body parts split routine only the way maps can do it which means it's awesome so we're going to give it away for free. Here's how you can win. Leave a comment below in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. Do all those things. If we like your comment, we'll notify you in the comment section. We're not going to message you through WhatsApp or Telegram or anything weird like that. Only in the comment section, we'll let you know that you won and you got free access to Map Split. We also got a sale going on right now. Two workout bundles. We got the Skinny Guy Bundle. That's 50% off and it's got all these programs right here. The other bundle that's on sale is the Fit Mom Bundle, which has all these other programs over here. So they're both 50% off. If you want to get that discount and you want to get set up, click on the link at the top of the description below to get that full discount. All right, here comes the show. Oh. Speaking of skin, I pulled up, some, I bought up some studies for red light therapy. So we work with Juve, which is a red light therapy company. And, you know, they, 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 have, the, they have the best red light therapy product on the market. If you want one for your house, this is the best one because they use the wavelength, the concentration, the type of red light that is used in studies. Because you can find red light on the market and it's just not the same ones that they use in studies. But check this out. So we know how much it helps with skin. That's proven. Hair, hair regrowth, that's proven. But I didn't realize there were this many really studies. Really cell related. 
Yeah, well, mitochondria, from right? From the mitochondria Which is pretty perspective. Much Bro, That's what I mean. <laughs> it's like, it's great. That's why it has crazy, you know, uh, things that you think is magical. Well, check this out, dude. Osteoarthritis. There was a study that really? found- Yeah. Red light therapy, cut osteoarthritis-related pain, ready for this, by more than 50%. What? Osteoarthritis pain by more than 50%. Okay, wow. how did they- That's like more than a, that's more than a painkiller. How do they measure? That's crazy. Is it a survey? Is it like, how do you Yeah, feel? I mean, they have the person come in. Yeah. They do the red light therapy on the affected area. So whether it be knee, wrist, hand, wow. or whatever. And then the person, you know, reports how much more, less pain or whatever. 50% less pain. Then there was a study done on um, tendonitis. These were people with Achilles tendonitis. And it reduced measurable inflammation and pain in people with a, a tendonitis. So actually measured inflammation went down. Wow. So for pain, this is why all the pro uh, yeah. athlete teams yeah. are now using. Well, I think, I mean, we bring this product up a bit and it's like one of our most expensive products that we kind of talk about, but they do have the, the go, they do have the small unit version that's yeah. like pretty affordable. Uh, so it's not like you need to uh, shell it all out on, on the, the mega panels, like initially, just especially to localize an area like that. Yeah. yeah. As I say, I, I mean, I would use the go only for like, like a localized area yeah. or like your face. My sister puts hers up like while she's working on the computer. Oh, she just shines it. She just shi she just pops it up right next to her on her desk while she's working, and she absolutely loves it. And yeah. so Courtney does the same. Yeah. yeah, I love my 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 large panel. I think mean, the large panel is uh, amazing. <laughs> Jessica I've, Jessica was using it yeah. on her on her belly to prevent like stretch marks. So did like Katrina. That's what Katrina did with Matt. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah did it work? Was, I mean, she has no stretch marks. So I mean, I, it's hard to say, right? Because there's yeah, such an individual so variance things, with that, yeah. right? Um, but I think she. I mean, a lot of that is genetic, right? Like if you're, if you're, if it runs some people get stretch marks. From, I mean, so easily. Yeah. If no, I were pregnant, I have stretch marks. I have stretch marks yeah, from working out. On the well, you could get pregnant, armpits. actually. Huh? You can't get <laughs> Nowadays, pregnant. Nowadays, right? <laughs> stop, dude. Stop. Stop. <laughs> we're going to turn this podcast into a way. different podcast. We're fun. <laughs> yeah. Hey, speaking of shit on the internet that gets people kicked off, <laughs> do you know, uh, you guys know what Twitch is? Or these, these yeah, yeah. yeah. Are Gamers. There. I have a cousin that makes money doing that. Does he really? Yeah. Does he do like good is money? Is he a or? big personality on there? No, he's not big, yeah. but I mean, he makes decent money. I mean, he's actually inspired by us. Like, so he's followed us since the very beginning. And oh, that's cool. Yeah. So he got into the online thing and he used to always ask me about, you know, building a YouTube channel and he's like, and then he's all into the Twitch thing. And so, yeah, I know he makes, he makes a little bit. Really? Of is it right. still, it's like the first person shooter games are most popular to watch people play or. You know, I don't know enough about it to tell you which is the most popular, but what makes people really good on that. So like, um. Uh, you you mentioned his name, who's one of the Doctor Disrespect. Yeah, my buddy, who's our age, who that, yeah. you know watches it. Dude, him. some of these kids make a ton of money on yeah. that. Well, you know what they are is they're the well. First of all, the kids love to see all the you know the hacks for the games, sure, and the yeah. shortcuts. It's and like the, watching sports. Yeah, and then you have somebody if they have a personality and they're funny and they're entertaining and stuff yeah. like that. And Did I tell you about that when my oldest was young that he totally clowned the clown on me so hard? Yeah, you told you've told us a couple times. Yeah. Where he, he said he, I'm like, why do you watch people play video games? He goes, well, people watch sports. Yeah, I'm like, oh, I guess you're right. It's the same thing. Well, I remember doing that too, even with like Mario Brothers or Zelda. It's like I would go to my friend's house and watch their older brother play because mm. he was amazing at it. You're like, oh, how do you do that? Oh. And they would just like l keep going through yeah. levels like nothing. What a great game that was. Legend it was the of best. Zelda. Doug, pull up. I just sent you a YouTube video. This was a Twitch streamer that got suspended. So I want to see if you guys can, like, what do you guys think about? Um, he got suspended for what? She did. Oh, she got oh, suspended. She got and um, just, yeah, I just kind of watch what happens in, 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 the, in the video. Too, and, she too hot for TV. And or what? see what's going on uh. in the video. Uh, let's see if Doug can, Doug can pull this up. Anyway, this is a popular Twitch streamer. Is she still on Twitch? She got suspended. She suspended. I think. I don't know if she got kicked off eventually, but got suspended for- uh, What was she like crossing- Nudity? Uh, her, yeah, like her fans only with this, her well, it was Twitch. Just, she was just playing video games and uh, it got, you know, it got kind of weird um, oh, during, the, during the- So her name is Kimika. Kimika. Kimika was her name. So there she is. And, uh, oh, hi, Kimika. Yeah, she's yeah. you know, playing some games. Okay. Oh, oh. What's going on? What's, there? what's happening back there? <laughs> oh, oh, what is? Yeah, what is he oh, doing? Oh, wow! Yeah, dude. Bruh. She's she's. Ha <laughs> <laughs> it's just trying to play play off like wow. like it's like nothing crazy's wow. happening. Got suspended because wow. it looks like she's having sex off camera. Yeah. So like half her body's in. I know, but so. 
So I mean, okay, what if she's just faking it to get views and stuff yeah. like that? Like, well, she either way, you can't really see. But yeah, it's... I mean, she didn't. There's nothing that you could see. No, so. but she still got her body definitely for getting moved, which is around. probably why she got suspended and not pulled off. I mean, that's actually not I, a bad strategy. Very though, smart yet. strategy. Yeah. Are you kidding me? Like, I mean, I bet she because th that that's how they get paid, right? Is views. Also, mm. I bet you, I bet you, I haven't, I know nothing about Twitch and nothing about these gamers, but I bet you. If you're a female stream and you stream on there and you play video games and you're halfway good and you're halfway good looking, you probably attract because it's all uh, mostly oh, dudes, yeah. right? It's oh, mostly yeah. guys, yeah. of course. Yeah. Adolescent boys and you know, no. If you're, I mean, boys, obviously it matters if you're good, right? Because no one's going to waste their time watching someone play video games just because they're hot. They suck, yeah. You can go get on Instagram or fucking yeah, yeah. fans only shit for the or only fans for stuff like that. But if she's actually good and she's got that going for her, like, of course, well, I'm sure that's. Yeah. I bet if we were to look up like the top. 10 female Twitch streamers. I bet if Doug pulled that up, I bet you that most of them are probably pretty good looking. And, it's and I'm sure the guy, the, the kids are watching like, oh man, we could be, we could date. And then she like, would like to play video games with yeah. me too. She wouldn't get mad. She'd be totally into it. <laughs> <You> know, <laughs> she would yell at me for playing video games all the yeah. time. <laughs> this is perfect. Yeah. Oh God. I remember yeah, when I dream. actually thought I was in a game forever, dude. I really thought I was going to be a gamer forever. Uh, you, it, it was like mandatory that I had to date a girl that was okay with that. For sure. yeah. <laughs> oh my god, it cracks me up I hearing know, that. From, hearing that coming out of your mouth now. I know, yeah, I think the same thing too. I was like, oh my god, like how much time, how much of my life did I waste? Yeah. <laughs> totally, dude. It was so fun though. I mean, it was yeah. a blast when I, even as a young adult, I remember my buddy and I both coming home from our careers and. You know, we'd sit and muck out till one o'clock in the morning on. Well, on that was the games. thing. There was not a whole lot going on campus when I was in college, and it was like. Dude, uh, we had that. GoldenEye, you know, and so we just would play Ooh, GoldenEye for hours. It, but that was the last time I was, like, super nerded out on games. Yeah. It just goes to show you, though, how much you change, right, as you get older. Like, yeah. you think you know everything, and then my you My best friend and I, we were all together a couple of weekends ago. We were actually we were having this similar conversation, kind of talking about, oh, the, the, back in the day, he's got two kids now, right? We, none of us play anymore. And the girls were like, because the, the, both our wives have been with us for over 12 years. So they they remember that. We were playing back when they first met us and stuff like that. And uh, we were like defending ourselves. So we were like, dude, when Justin and I, we played hockey together, we were ranked top 10 in the world. And they were like, you guys were not right. And then we got into a big old argument. <laughs> you see how defensive we were? We were so mad. We were like, we were so, we were so proud of that. You know what I'm saying? That we were like ranked top 10 in the fucking, in the world. And that yeah. bullshit. Yes, we were. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I have it. I'm pretty sure I have it on my phone. I took a picture of that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Arguing with our wives, you know, yeah. some hella old like that. You know what? Every time I talk about stuff like, or, or you know, we, we have conversation. Like, I remind myself how much I think I know now that I probably don't know shit. You know what I mean? Like, what I'm sure mean? in 10 years, I'm going to look back and be like, Yo, bro, you were so wrong. But all that <laughs> stuff, bro, you don't know what the hell you're... You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what I, I mean, see. yes and no, because I think as you get to our age now, you're more careful about how much stuff yeah. you say with that, Are much, you? that much conviction. Uh, you're probably right. Yes. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. I you've mean, seen, you, and the thing is you've seen all the patterns play out a lot yeah. more so. So it's like, yeah, your predictability of like how things are going to go is usually a little Dude, more accurate. This, this right. is why my favorite people to talk with, if I'm at, if I talk to it's any, wisdom. If I, when I go to work out of the gym, I don't talk to anybody. Okay. I'm very quiet. Put my headphones on, do my thing. But if I talk to anybody, it's an old person, old guy, old woman. Because I love, I, yeah. they have so much experience. I mean, you, seventy years, gems. Yeah. If you're seventy years old, I mean, you've been on Earth for thirty years longer than I have. There's got to be, there's, and not always. I'm well, sure. That's why Doug works so well with us because yeah. uh, <laughs> all the wisdom he brings. <laughs> <laughs> the wisdom wizard guy. He's, yeah, he's, he remembers when they invented yeah. dust. That was a long. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that was a good time. Remember that? <laughs> they call that the Oracle. He's like our Oracle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like he's just the, the tried and true. You hey, hey speaking of Doug, Doug, are you rocking our new our new merch over there? I am. You know, we are terrible about selling our own merch. Yeah, we are. You know that? The worst. Do people even know that we have merchandise? <laughs> I don't know. We got. Is it like all of Savannah came now? in with Savannah came in and like dropped like four or five uh, shirts on me that are dope that I have yeah. never even seen, never saw them made yeah. or anything. Yeah. Andrew's got yeah, one the on. The new I squat think. and scroll one is like an olive color. I think Andrew's got the uh, the the squat and sc he, uh, squat and scroll. Squat, squat, the, yeah, he has the black one, the new olive one. One, though is sick i was wearing that yesterday yeah and then the pretty, new pretty so uh, what people don't know is that the, the reason why these are special is because justin goes in the back and gently hugs every single shirt that goes out <laughs> for <laughs> for purchase rubs so over you, his body you get to, you wear yeah. it it's like so essence of a little bit of my nipple was there smells like no a, don't go too far <laughs> smells like motor oil no one's gonna <laughs> motor oil <laughs> 
<laughs> Sawdust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, uh, Exhausted yeah. motor oil. So, hell, yeah. hell yeah. So do you guys like watching random stuff on YouTube sometimes? Because I found some cool videos the other day. This is super random, but did you know that you, there, are, there are magnets, these small magnets that are so powerful that they're dangerous. If you, if you leave them alone close to each other and something's in the middle, it'll literally destroy. They'll explode. They'll destroy themselves and whatever. That's how powerful they are. What? Yeah, yeah, Doug. If you if you you can even Google ultra powerful magnets exploding or whatever. They the people you I don't know where you get these. It's the most amazing nerdy thing you brought up so I, far. See, yeah. you love this, don't I, you? Yes, I do. They're, they're I, like I, this big, dude. I, I was gonna say I thought I thought part of what would make the 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 pool would have to be this. They had to be bigger. No, no, these are and, small and little magnets. You're not even adding electricity. No, they let them go and they get them closer together and they smash together and explode or they'll put like an apple in between can or we buy these. Well, what, okay, I don't know. If you could buy so them. So how do they get magnetized? Like, like how does that happen? It's magic, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like, like, I mean, you know, like, like where do they find these, like, ultra strong them. magnets? Like, I, or do they ionize them somehow? I, or, like, any other buzzword I can I have no, bring in here in science? I have no idea. That's a good question. Okay. But, and I don't know do if Do magnets even... need to be magnetized? Or is it just what they're made up of that makes them magnetic? Well, that's what I mean. Wow. Do they just... Wow. Could you help me with let's the science back, here? Let's back up for a second. <laughs> you, you, can you help me with the science, like, science I'm really guy? trying to like figure this, like this out now. magnet rock that they, <laughs> I was, I just, that they harvest? <laughs> magnet rocks. <laughs> so, yeah, so, so, there's look, magnet look, look, mines. You so don't they, know about that? So, so yeah, you got to see. Oh, yeah. They come together so hard, but that's not even the one. That one, they fall on top of each other and just explode because it's so powerful. Wow. They have ones that slide together, like like not vertically, but horizontally. That will crush each other. I don't know what they are, but I, so, I almost want to buy them. When I was a kid, I was infatuated with magnets. I was infatuated with magnets for a while, too. You were? Yeah. In, in, I think it was chemistry or whatever. We were kind of messing around with them and just like, especially the ones that repel each other. Yes. And we'd be like, Ugh. I yeah. just, it was so weird because. Oh, look, you can order first for magnets.com. Oh. This, order them up. Okay, Doug. do the crushing ones, like the the super strong neodyne. What does that say? Neodymium. Ne neodymium. Neodym oh, look. Watch. They're going to crush an apple. Neodymium? They, they, they slowly bring them together until they, they, they obviously pull each other and then boop. <laughs> look how powerful these are. Sealer and then apparently apple. you can't separate them. Like once that's it, that's it. You're not gonna oh, you get one time and then that's it? You ain't going to be able to pull them apart apparently from what I've read. Look at this. Look, it, just destroy so the, it just destroyed an apple. No, that didn't. Oh, they just oh, oh, that was like a, a fucking like slide of hand. Show us a better one. Slide of hand trick. Oh, right show there. us a better one. Neodymium. So is that a, a, an element, like a, a, a metal? It's a tree. <laughs> there's a there's magnet tree. <laughs> no. <laughs> That's not how this happens. Come on, man. No. We got to figure so this out. Did they charge himself? Are you going to finish telling me the science? You're just going to make fun of me. <laughs> how does, there's how scientists does, like does somebody charge like him? Punching themselves in the face So is it right just now. normal metal and then someone charges them up? Or yeah, do they I harvest think, them for a tree? Yeah, I think they it's more. They have to charge them or, or like, yeah. See, so neodymium is one of the elements on the periodic table. Yeah. Thank you. So, so you, but you, I mean, you have to, yeah, you have to, you have to magnetize them. Yeah. You do have to magnetize them in order for this to happen. I've seen some that are even more powerful than because that, Doug, where they literally, they, they it's super dangerous. They're very careful getting them close to each other. And then they have to like leave because they explode and, and sh shrapnel. So it says the most important use for neodymium is in an alloy with iron and boron to make very strong permanent magnets. Permanent magnets? Wow. Permanent magnets. Perma magnets. Wait, does that mean it's always magnetized or when they come together, that's it. They're stuck. Uh, you know, I don't know the answer. Mm. Um, where, where, where I'm trying I to, think I just the, thought I'm trying to think of the application have. for this. Yeah. Like, where do you, where would this, well, they say they use these in little, uh, electronic devices such as mobile phones, microphones, loudspeakers, etc. So very small ones. So I don't know. And we keep those in our pocket right next to our junk all day. Yeah. No, it's not um, going to do that just though. Pulling it. I, I just thought of something real romantic. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yeah. Like you buy one, you put your girl's name on it. Instead of rings, you like, just yeah, this is like us. Be honest, our love is explosive. <laughs> you were definitely the guy who had the, the half the heart. Never. The other, yes, you. I did, did not have yes, a half. You, I yes, never you did have that. a half of a heart. No. So everybody best has friends. That was yeah. it forever. No. Yes, <laughs> you were the forever. A Wait a minute. You were the forever. I would get one with you guys though. Can I just say like I would get one I'm with a you little guys. embarrassed because uh, you were actually at my wedding, but uh, everybody uh, does kind of like a little ritual thing, you know, and so we had. I don't know who brought this idea up, but you're going to have different color sand. And then you oh, I pour that. it together in the middle. And I was just like... Did you do that? Yeah, we did in the middle. It's supposed to represent like bringing two together. But it's like, 
It's still just like mixed sand. I don't like sand. It's coarse and rough and irritating. And it gets everywhere. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's it not, work. it's nothing like it didn't create the point, new. Justin, it's just, it's just, <laughs> no, it would have been <laughs> more powerful if it was like two different elements than they... Yeah, they you know they created like, a, a oh, new fuck, this ain't a good theme, sign. or like I'm cheddar. You're <laughs> like Swiss. we did it all wrong, is what I'm saying. Like it should have like been a like, chemical reaction. And did you guys have a traditional? Did you get married in a church, or did you get married outside of a church? We got, outside. Well, we had we had a, a a preacher that I grew up with uh, conduct the ceremony, but we were out at this uh, house. He was outdoors. Yeah, outdoors mm. at this venue, and uh, it was like a venue. Yeah. I didn't know you, bro. Yeah. Oh, that's not a good reason. That's a good uh, reason for yeah, that. Yeah, you might make the cut now. How many people did you have? How many people? I had. Were you in the wedding? No. A, a, mm. Probably like. Uh, <laughs> he didn't like me that much. He didn't like his or yeah, something. Yeah. I think I was only invited because I was the boss still. At yeah, that 125, time. 150. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. So, so I guess I, you know, you're in like a couple. Get invited. Other, you know, 24 hour fitness people. They're making the list, you know? She's like, do you want to invite Adam? She's like, oh, I guess. Yeah. Make yeah. him sit in the corner with those people yeah. who don't like those cousins. That Adam's like, it just doesn't work out. You know, you got like, my number. I feel like that's the most telling about where you where you rank in the in the family or whatever. It's like with the table you're at. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, yeah. If you have like the like miscellaneous You're at the scrub people, table. Like, there's no like, even there's no kids. paired up anybody. It's just yeah. like, oh, If all we had kids, singles. he'd been at the kid table 100%. <laughs> yeah, or the kid table. Who are you? I'm, I'm his mom's chiropractor really close to the family. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah, nice to meet you. Anyway, no, it's our, our homeopathic uh, guy. In, in my here. in my family, I think this might be a cultural thing. There's when we have big family functions, there was always a table with the unmarried, like the kids, right? Yeah. But if if you're like in your 30s and you're not married, and you're, yeah. you're still sitting at the kid table. Yeah. Sorry, you're not married. Hey. You can't sit with us. Hey. You sit with the kids over there, John. That's it. You're not grown up yet. Yeah. Sorry. You, know, you think you're cool. You yeah. sit over there. Anyway. So uh, who was it that was saying, was it you that was saying that Courtney was using seed quite a bit now? Yeah, she was now. What yeah, you think? Yeah. She, she's actually noticed a, a noticeable difference uh, in, in terms of her gut. Um, and, and this was just something like, and we'd. We've gone back and forth with a lot of different um, histamine type diets and stuff. Like, oh, because, low histamine. Yeah, and just to try and like get some some resolve. But the biggest thing that's made an impact has been seed so far. So what besides was there, the diet. So uh, seed is. By, like, I've had a million and one probiotics. I've tried them all, and I get some benefits. Sometimes I don't get too much of a benefit. But I, it's night and day with seed. Yeah, night and day. Literally, if I have a, my gut is off and I take it, I know it's a huge difference the day after. And it's got to be what they say, which is that the capsule itself is their own special type that releases it at the right moment, so it gets in the in the colon, I guess, and, and colonizes the colon. Yeah. But it makes a big difference. And you, yeah, you were, effective. did you use it after your fast? Yeah, you. I mean, you're the one that told me I should. That's why I, I was asking you what should I take uh, after I, you know, been off a three day fast, and you basically said just the uh, the seed. So I've done just the seed, but I also use the mass enzymes too. So I've used the mass enzymes. I just had my first meal that was not homemade, and so I had the mass enzymes. With oh, that, that, the, but I've been ate? doing yeah, but I've been doing the seed. spicy tacos, huh? It's, it's, it's a good choice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> How's your tubby feel? Yeah, buddy? well, went to the restroom already. <laughs> a little fiesta so. going on. Down no, there. actually, I, I noticed the difference from the mass enzymes. You know, but the seed, or maybe it's because the seed, because I've been consistently using the seed since mm. uh, since I got off the fast. Which hey, only so been a few days. Quick question about uh, drug use. Hmm. What do you guys? What do you guys think the trends? I, I have this study here. What do you think the trends are with drug use during the um, pandemic? The pandemic, or or last year? We'll just say last year. Like what uh, types of drugs are the forty like like percent? Did people increase. use more drugs or less drugs? Of course more. Yeah, of course more. Well, here, I'm going to read you guys. I'm well, going to read you guys on the type of drug, maybe. Well, I'm going to read you guys an article title. Isn't that is there in, like historically? Isn't that like one of the? I mean, it's it's so bad to do this, but like, isn't that like the best things to invest in? Like yeah, cigarettes, alcohol. Yeah, cigarettes, alcohol, when and guns when, during when during shit goes down. Yeah. Yep. Well, so check out this this title of this article from Reason Magazine. It's going to make sense to you. Adults used pot and psychedelics in record numbers last year, while adolescent drug use fell sharply. Mm. Why do you guys think adolescent drug use fell so sharply? They can't go out. They're at home. Yeah, they're, yeah. Busy. <laughs> they're, they're at busy home with online. mom and dad. And mom and dad are doing more drugs. <laughs> can't shoulder tap when you're uh, stuck in the house. <laughs> mom and dad are I'm doing drugs. I'm treat my anxiety having this kid here all day. That's what, it cracked me up when I read this article. Oh, wow. It's kind of like, uh, duh. Yeah, like the adults are like, kids are here all day long. Here you go. Stay on the video, guys. I'm going to go on a journey. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. <laughs> okay, and mom. the kids are like, yeah. oh. 
I can't have no pot. I'm at home with my mom and dad. <laughs> How hilarious is that? that so is adult funny. use went up. Adolescent use wow. uh, went down. Interesting. I know, I know. They say it's what? It's cigarettes, alcohol, fast food, or like um, processed food snacks goes up when shit's really bad. And I think- Well, that was only like stores open. That was just always was crazy to me. I mean, I did have somebody explain in terms of alcoholics and what that would do if we didn't have access, uh, but yeah. whatever. I mean, it's- that was always crazy to me. It's that like, was an interesting point because I, I got the same DM from that person when we talked about the irony of the, the liquor store liquor store open. staying open, and they said, "You know how what that would cause if we were to shut those down during." Isn't that weird? Yeah. I you know I didn't know that for a long time that if you're an alcoholic and you go cold turkey, you could die. You could die, yeah, because yeah. your body now has adapted and relies on yeah. the alcohol for yeah. is it neurotransmitters? And because there's such a large yeah, amount of know. people that we would have a, a mess on our hands. That's crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So okay. I also I, really I also fact. read this article that um, entertainment changes. So during times when things are tumultuous and uneasy, people like more Nostalgic. fantasy. Oh. No, they like more fantasy, more really? imagination based, like superhero mm. shit, stuff like that to escape. Than and like less like drama. Reality. Yeah, like reality stuff. That oh. makes sense. I think where I saw it from the nostalgia standpoint is because there wasn't a lot of new content being released because nobody was shooting really or was oh. able to do that so it was like everybody fell back into the old old shows like the office science like I, I know that went through the roof yeah by the way uh i know we're this er, this episode is going to drop after this is released but i think uh as of the recording of this the new lord of the rings series is out oh yeah Lena Nano way. Yeah. <laughs> what did you when say? Is that this Friday? I don't know. It's no, no. I think today. I think right now. Oh, really? Right? Are we? It oh, is. Yeah. So oh, they spent today. what? How a, much? A like, billion specifically? dollars. Specifically. A billion dollars. Like one billion. On the series. Oh, I mean, what was the- That's insane. What was the um, the Game of Thrones prequel? That was up that, there too. It has to be up there. Look, those, look, they, that, look at what the budget was for that. I think that was like a hundred million the or something. The graphics. Like but a billion? On the drag. Uh, I was actually a little worried about that because it's like- you don't know if they're going to kind of cheap out uh, because it's kind of like a, a prequel. You know, I don't know. Sometimes they change things up it's a little like a bit. Puppet. Yeah, it's like a cheesy. Like, so like super great storyline, and all of a sudden it's like yeah. a, a boop, 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 yeah, yeah. exactly like puppeting. You know, guy doing it. <laughs> it's yeah. claymation. You're like Mister Rogers' My, voice. Hey, like Jim Henson. All how, of a sudden hey, is how, like producing how it. How spoil these kids now? <laughs> I try to show my kids old movies, and my kids are like, "That's crap." And I'm like, "That was so good." Remember Jason and the Argonauts? Yeah, you remember that? Oh yeah, that's okay, claymation. Yeah. Now it says that the, it says that the dragon one is two hundred million is the most expensive TV show in recent memory. So no, it's okay, a bit, well, well, let's rem yeah, yeah look, look at, up the, the 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 what is it? The Lord of the Rings. What is it called? Now this is would it, only make sense if oh, they shot the entire like a like the whole season, obviously, but I yeah. mean like multiple seasons. Wouldn't you think for a billion? I read a billion. Am I tripping? That's insane. You might be tripping. I, that, I have that's crazy to Speaking me. Speaking of psychedelics. Yeah. Um, yeah. What was it called? What's the new series called? It's the Lord. Rings of Power. Rings of Power. Thank okay. you, Resident 467. Why did I get yeah. a billion? Yeah, how'd you get a billion? Because maybe you know they said half a billion, I bet they said. Oh, you know why? I bet the article oh, said inflation. like half. <laughs> <laughs> now it all makes sense. Uh, oh, man. <laughs> Thanks, Biden. Yeah. yeah. No, it's uh, so four, no, just one season, $465 million just for one Dude, season. But that's still outrageous for just one season. You want to know what I'm super Why? upset about, How though? How does it get that expensive? That's crazy. Oh, uh, shh. I mean, are dragons that expensive to rent right now? <laughs> dragons, they caught. I mean, you gotta so feed them. Inflation's really you know getting the, the, inflation's really getting the rental dragon market. <laughs> <laughs> you know, shit. You know, it makes a lot of upkeep, Adam. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what they poop? You or know? maybe it's feeding uh, them. Uh, feeding the dragons yeah. are so you expensive. Feed them a, lot of, a lot of kids. Drain the dragon. You so know? imagine children. reading the budget, right? <laughs> it's, it's, so it's, they put dragon that in. See, they try and slide it. They got dragon food. <laughs> you guys, hey, ten, I need ten million for dragons. Hey, guys driving a Lamborghini. You know, there was a picture. This is how stupid some people are there was a picture of one of the jurassic parks where it looked like a dead triceratops mm. and then there was a hunter standing in front of it with a gun and there were actual got, animal like, rights mad. activists <laughs> that were pissed <laughs> off about that picture i remember that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's not a real animal bro <laughs> what's wrong with you? you name it jojo and it's over yeah, yeah. no when yeah. i was I, you know what ma makes me sad about this this new season this lord of the rings season i guess the rings of power <clears throat> is and this is embarrassing i hate to say this very sad but my wife has never seen the Lord of the Rings series, wow. so she will not watch this. I don't movie. think I could get Katrina to watch. Doesn't that. surprise me. Yeah, yeah. Katrina wow. doesn't like this. Stuff Why doesn't at all? it surprise you? I just 
She doesn't like. I don't know. Sad? I just knowing knowing you guys, like, yeah, she doesn't like a lot of the sci-fi or fantasy stuff. Do, do any wives do any of the wives? Will your uh, wife watch Lord of the Rings? No, she won't. She'll watch Lord. Uh, we'll see. We'll find out. Because Courtney's I, like a Dexter watcher. That's what she weird. likes. That yeah, stuff. She likes all the crime and, and murder. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you know, so oh, it see. really fires her up, and it scares me. It's <laughs> like I don't understand why you're so into this. How to kill Especially, your husband? Yeah. Yeah. Check out the series on yeah. How to Kill Your Husband. It's so yeah. good. Black Widow. You know. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> Like, I get it. She like, hasn't seen the original Lord of the Rings, the whole she movie series? She did, but like, so we didn't get into the Hobbit part of it, uh, so that other series, but uh, we did watch Lord of the Rings. She liked that, so we're going to give it a try. I don't know, because she already abandoned the Game of Thrones because the first opener was so brutal, dude. Like, people were getting their limbs cut off, like some dude's head exploded, yeah. like, it was awesome. She's like, I'm and cool. she's like, I'm out. Yeah, she's like, she's like, no. I only like real. <laughs> who do you think? Yeah, exactly. Who do you think watches the least amount of TV with their wife or girlfriend? And Andrew's including this. Do you watch a lot with Savannah? Yeah. You guys watch this, a lot of the same. Yeah. Uh, not mm -hmm. very, there's not very much stuff you guys watch separately. Yeah. No, we definitely watch stuff separately, but we watch the sci-fi stuff together. Sci-fi. Oh, yeah. oh wow, oh, she oh, likes sci-fi. That's why they've been yeah. married for so long. Yeah. See? Definitely not Doug. Doug's, Doug limits like well, she only gets one day to watch TV with you, so I know you, you, you be the. <laughs> The least for sure. <laughs> so, Courtney will be like pimple popper, yeah, you know, or, or the the murder. I'm like, I'm not watching this. Jessica, so she watch it when I'm putting the Jessica's kids. Jessica's like home renovation, uh, reality crazy crap, which is fun. We watch that and we'll talk shit about it. And that's in stand up comedy, like anything. Oh, and documentaries sometimes she'll watch with me, depending on the mood. Oh, we or watch a lot of those, yeah. But yeah. like, I love this man. I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. That's a, that's see, that's funny because that's one of the one things that Katrina doesn't really watch that much with me. Is what? documentaries. She's not really into documentaries. Mm. Oh, she, really? Yeah, yeah. She makes fun of me. That's because every documentary you watch is a sports documentary. You don't. No, watch she loves. That's the only documentary she'll watch. Oh, yeah, what other documentaries sports, you watch? Yeah, yeah. she's a sports. Oh, like, any fanatic. documentary. I'll, I'll I'll watch a good documentary. I mean, I just I was just telling you guys about the McCaffrey one, which is more like a. I don't know McAfee? You, McAfee, yeah, yeah, the McAfee one, right? That's like a half reality, half documentary. The Mid Cafe. I don't, you, I don't know what you would call that, <laughs> but no sports ones. Katrina, absolutely, she watched all the fifty fifties, all the untold. Of yeah, course. no, she was the first girl I'd ever dated that I don't vividly remember this day. I was just so like, when oh, you're like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, yes. I'm gonna get I mean, you pregnant. Came home and it was like a Sunday, and I remember rushing home from working or doing something, and football had already been going for like an hour or two, and she's sitting on the couch by herself watching football. I'm like, oh. Yes, like, here's we're gonna ring. work out. It's <laughs> yes. gonna work. I no, I love Lord of the Rings, man. When I was a kid, I watched the old cartoons. Remember the old ones with the weird singing, yeah. and they were the weird, as shadowy hell. ring wraiths. Yeah, and it's got yeah. the guy singing in the front in the beginning, like <laughs> super weird. But I loved it. I loved the book. I loved the movies. Yeah, and now the series. So I, I who doesn't love Gollum? Yeah, it's really yeah. sucks because what, I'm gonna have to watch this alone. Do you guys follow that one that history Instagram page or whatever? Like I saw a, a clip mm -hmm. today on there. What's it called? It's called History Something, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm talking about? So yeah. you you want you follow that one? I mean, I don't know something history moments what? in history. No, no, just something. History. It's an Instagram page. Yeah. yeah, it's called History History Something uh, History History Memes. Oh, mm -hmm. I I saw one. Um, history, think, history in memes. Yeah, I think it was that one. I think yeah. it's history. Memes. I saw one where uh, heat radiation leaves a shadow after somebody walks away. Oh, oh yeah. What yeah. the fuck? Yeah, I didn't even uh, know that was the a intensity, thing. Intensity. Yeah, the radiation. It's just yeah. It's just intense radiation heat. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. Wow, oh, you saw? Well, that's why you uh, wasn't it like some of those bombs that um, they experimented with. Mm. the radiation of it like you'd see um whatever if it they had like mannequins or whatever, they had the shadow behind them that was just like forever mm. like stained there yeah i, I mean that's wild wow right oh my god they have a commercial they have a 1993 commercial on this this is a great page for a hand-free telephone headset Bro, where are you yeah. i just i shared that in my story I, yeah. well, i'm not the on whole Instagram. thing remember i got kicked off yeah I, just, yeah. I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, it was, the clip that you yes, put like dude. on the wa yes. walkie phone. I, you know, it's so funny. I had so many people like that were like twenty years old in the twenties that were like, "This is not real." I'm mm. like, "Yes, it is. Oh. It's very real." Oh, that was a real. She was in the first car phone. Yeah. Oh, I think it was so awesome. Yeah. <laughs> it was so big. Courtney's dad had one. Like, yeah, yeah, my uncle had Mercedes one. Mercedes, and he's just like. You know what kids will thirty seven thirty seven dollars a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were a, you were a legit millionaire if you had. I mean, yeah, you had no, you were a baller. If you yeah, had a, if you had a cell phone back in back in the early eighties, yeah. you were like do you, a baller. Do you remember <laughs> yeah, like Gordon kids, Gecko? Kids yeah. today will never know this. Where you're on the phone and you're talking to your friend about something like, oh yeah, what about that? And then your mom picks up the other line. 
Mom, get off the phone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'll never know that. <laughs> how you could just pick and you it can up. yeah, and it's like they they try to be all sneaky and you could you knew you heard it. Mm. You know, you, it was always the breathing. Could you, you remember yeah. when you're on or the you're phone? Or you were about to or about you were about to talk about something like hold on, hold on. You had to hold go on, put the phone down, go check the other phones. Yep. You know, make sure they're all make sure mom was with you. Yeah. Absolutely. Those are good times. Hey, check this out. One of the companies we've worked with the longest, one of our longest running sponsors is Organifi. And that's for a reason. They provide some of the best high quality plant-based organic supplements you'll find anywhere. Now, one of my favorites is their green juice. So if you have issues eating enough vegetables, you can try their green juice. Notice improvements in your skin, digestion. I get more energy. It's one of my favorite products and I use it on a semi-regular basis, about three days a week. I'll use this when I know my vegetable intake is a little low. Also, ashwagandha is in there. So it's an adaptogen. Helps your body deal with stress. Anyway, great product. They have lots of other great products. Go check them out. Head over to Organifi.com forward slash Mind Pump. That's O-R-G-A-N-I-F-I.com forward slash Mind Pump. Use the code Mind Pump and get 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is KC from Washington. KC, what's happening, man? How can we help you? And also, what is that boxing picture in the back there? We were looking at that, trying to figure out who that was. Is that a boxing picture behind you on the wall? Boxing picture? This one right here? Yeah, what is that? That's Iron Man. It is a Lego mural made up of almost 7,000 one-piece little studs. What? We couldn't uh, have been more off. Yeah. That my daughter helped me <laughs> I put I mean, the together. helmet might have gave it away, but you know. Like, yeah, wow. That's a Lego mural? Yeah, it's a Lego mural. It's almost 7,000 pieces, and it's all little one-piece one, one piece studs. Wow. Yeah, so. You're my kind of nerd. Well, yeah. that's awesome. All right, cool. So how can we help you out, man? Well, um, uh, I'm a I'm a father of four, and we got a you know we've got a busy schedule. Uh, this year, I'm responsible for dropping off our our girls at school in the morning, pick them up in the afternoon. So my workout times are you know tend to be very early. Um, for for a really long time, I've gotten up you know between four thirty and five, and then I'm at the gym you know about a half hour within a half hour later. But because I'm working out so early in the morning, I rarely ever get to eat anything beforehand. And so I'm technically working out fasted. Um, I'll definitely drink water beforehand to make sure I'm hydrated. I might have some coffee or some pre-workout. Um, and what I'm what I'm wondering is, is like with consistency being one of the biggest components, you know, y'all talked before about how you know, people who work out in the morning were your most consistent clients and people that you worked with in the gym. And I've definitely seen that myself where I've tried working out in the afternoon before or in the evenings and my consistency just tanks. And so like the morning, as far as consistency goes, is the best time for me. But what I'm wondering is, is there a downside to prolonged periods of resistance training while fasting? Yeah, not in your case. No. If you- It's how cell trains every day. Yeah, if you, if you were to do like- if you didn't eat, if you went to bed and then you didn't work out till 2 p.m. and you waited till after your workout at 2 p.m. to eat, and there were lots of other factors contributing to this, like your high stress, not getting good sleep, not getting enough nutrients, um, then yeah, there might be a, um, a detrimental effect. But in your case, no, you're, you're totally fine. You feel good. You feel healthy. I think um, sometimes people can feel a little low blood sugar, but that's super rare. If you're healthy, mm -hmm. if you feel fine, you're you're good. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. And I'm assuming you eat you eat after your workout. I'm assuming that's when you have your first meal. Yeah. So usually, you know, when I get home, I'm having breakfast. I'm I started using I think Adam's hack of what he shared of like you know scrambling. I scramble up some eggs and then I grab some leftover meat from the night before, whether that's chicken or hamburger, or, you know, you know ground beef or whatever, and just kind of mixing that in and making myself a little scramble. And that's you know how I start my my meals for the day. I'm really strong off with that protein and that seems to help. So like, I know I do feel, don't feel drained or fatigued by the end of the day, the workouts in the morning, like as long as I'm, as long as I'm awake by the time I get to the gym, you know, I don't really feel like I'm hindered or that there's like a, a huge variation in strength. Like sometimes on the weekends I'll work out in the afternoon instead. And I definitely like, I can sense a bit of the difference from working out at like one in the afternoon versus five 30 in the morning, just in terms of like energy level and a bit more of that mind body connection. Um, but it's not, it's not drastic. No, you, 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 you're, you're doing great, man. Yeah. I mean, and you found a way to be consistent. So yeah, you might get like a, you know, a 5%, uh, improvement in, in workout performance in the afternoon. Studies will kind of show this, but who cares because you're missing workouts. Like I work out, I know I'm stronger at noon. Okay. 
than I am at, I work out when you work out, 5.30, 6 a.m., but 5.36 a.m. is the only way I can be consistent. I have three kids. I got one on the way. So like you, I'm going to have four. There's no way I can work out in the afternoon or evening. It just doesn't work that way. So you're totally fine. And, you know, you, you go to bed and then you wake up and work out. You're, you're running off the fuel that you ate, you ate the day right. before. I was, yeah. That's the point I was going to make. Was that, and even if you felt like you wanted to see if you can improve that performance and still not eat anything, you could just load up a uh, higher calorie at nighttime. Because you're really not burning very much. I mean, once once you kind of stop for the evening, you have dinner. Uh, I imagine most people's nights are pretty sedentary, watching TV, hanging out with the kids and the wife or whatever, and then you go to bed. So, and then when you're when we're sleeping, we're burning very minimal calories all night. So, you wake up and you're what that what's fueling that workout is dinner from the previous night. And so, if you you could play with what types of dinners you eat and how that impacts the next day, because that might make a difference. Like, let's say you typically lean towards a high protein, low carbohydrate dinner, because let's just say that that's what you've done forever. Maybe switch it and, and give yourself a higher carbohydrate yeah. uh, dinner and then see how performance is in the morning and kind of play with that a little bit if you want to see if you can get more performance out. But I think what you're doing is fine. I mean, we're really splitting hairs mm -hmm. uh, talking about all these other things. Yeah. Yeah. The only detriment, I mean, for me personally, that uh, I always the fast uh, in the morning uh, consistently for a couple of years and I wasn't eating breakfast though, which you're eating breakfast, which is already something that, uh, you know, this probably doesn't apply it, you know, specifically to that because you're, you know, adequately fueling yourself. But for me, it was like, uh, consistently over the years, it ended up actually affecting my metabolism just because that was something that uh, my, my body started to shift in that direction. So, but that that's the only kind of caveat I have. Yeah, no, you're, you're good, man. Yeah. You're doing great. I have a question for you. How, how the hell do you look so relaxed with four kids, calm? I'm freaking out over here, man. <laughs> uh, practice, uh, and they all went back to school today. So uh, I feel, oh, I feel yeah. great. Uh, okay, good. Refreshed. Good there it is. All right, man. Well, thanks for calling in. Awesome. Appreciate you all. Thanks so much. All right, Take care. Right. Yeah, I guess the only time that this would be an issue would be a endurance athlete. So if somebody's like at 530 in the morning and they're going like hard and long, in those cases, I would typically recommend some type of a carbohydrate drink during the session. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to run into that with a, with a strength training workout. No, no, so long as he's in a like a – I mean, it can make a difference too if you're uh, dieting. Like so, if you already been, super low calorie, yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're already been super low calorie for an extended period of time because you're trying to lean out or something, and then you also don't have breakfast before you work out, like you, you'll probably notice a difference. I mean, I remember that with dieting for shows, like those workouts were just brutal. Sometimes. Yeah, so yeah. that was really you Drudgery. were really dieting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to be dieting for like one day of low calorie is not going to do that to you. But if you are in a calorie deficit for consistent weeks, and then you're also not fueling before your workout totally. you 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 may definitely feel a difference but i think what he's got is going on is, is perfect our next caller is haley from idaho hi haley how can we help you hi yeah um so my question is i'm reading your book the resistance training revolution and it might be a dumb question but i just kind of wanted more clarification um but you were talking about cardio and how it lowers your metabolism and burn fat and everything um and how you recommend doing hit i'm currently doing anabolic and i'm doing and i'm following it pretty religiously anyway to, uh, my goal is to lose more fat uh, body fat and become healthy and everything but i on the weekends i love to do not necessarily hit i really don't like hit but i like to go like mountain biking and hiking and trail running and stuff so i want to make sure that's not going to hinder my process as long as i'm still building the muscle yeah okay so i'm glad you said all this so first off um cardio can slow the metabolism down if it be, if it becomes the cornerstone of your routine in combination with a low calorie diet okay so it doesn't always do that and it's got health benefits uh so cardio can be very good it can actually help you build muscle too if it improves your health and your fitness as far as hit is concerned when you look, okay, so when you look at studies and they're comparing, you know, the similar populations, HIT has a better metabolism effect and it's more time um, efficient when it comes to burning body fat. However, it's not appropriate for everybody. HIT cardio is intense, so it requires better skill, better technique, and if your if your stress levels are high, uh, you're not going to get uh, much out of it because it just adds more stress. If you did more of a steady state type cardio, it could be recuperative. It could be relaxing. Um, so that in that case, it might be better. And then 
what you're saying is like you like doing that stuff on the weekend please don't stop doing it and, and yeah <laughs> i wasn't planning on it <laughs> yeah no you're doing great there's you're doing every if you're if you're doing strength training and then on the weekend you're mm -hmm. doing the stuff that you enjoy doing which is hiking and mountain bike riding and your nutrition is is doing is good for your body and your goals you're on you're on the right track just keep trying to get stronger keep trying to strengthen and sculpt your body and monitor your nutrition adjusted accordingly and you're doing everything right as long as you feel good and you feel healthy you're doing great with all that Haley, can i any idea where your calories are at uh yeah so i'm tracking them currently because um so i took your guys' advice from another podcast i listened to and i just did a bulk last week because i went on vacation and then now i'm back into a cut so i'm doing 1700 a cat 1700 a day Okay. All right. Yeah. My my only thing that I'd be concerned about is if you're going too low calorie and then also doing that. Uh, to Sal's point, mm -hmm. uh, cardio can be very beneficial, but if you are also in a a dramatic calorie deficit while also training three to four times a week plus doing uh, some you know activity that's hours long on the weekend, mm -hmm. it, you may not see the benefits from it the way you would want to see. So I would make sure I fuel my body on those days. So. Uh, keep in mind if you're going for a, you know, a two hour or three hour mountain bike ride, um, the amount of calories your body would probably want to have is quite a bit more than probably your week during the week. And I think to get the benefits that he's talking about with cardio, I would make sure I stay fed, uh, on those days. Um, and, and everything else I think is fine. Haley, what, um, what are your, what's your goal? You're looking, okay. So you said you're on a cut, so I'm assuming you're trying to get leaner. Do you have a, target? Yeah. do you have like a number or a target percentage, uh, that you want to get to? Um, so target percentage, I really don't have that okay. uh, number. I've always felt the best when I'm about 145 ish. And so I have a ways to go on that, but, um, to be leaner and stuff would be awesome as well. Probably a lower fat percentage. I'm trying to think for women, it needs to be a little bit higher than men. So maybe about 17%, well, right? Don't, don't worry about body fat percentage if you don't know yeah, <laughs> where you're at. So you, you so you said you feel good around 140-ish. Um, mm -hmm. Do you need to lose more than 15 pounds? If you don't, you don't have to answer this if you don't want to, but do you have to lose more than 15 pounds to get there? Yeah, I do. Okay. So I got I like hurt last year and had to take like a year off and I went off the diet, like eating healthy and stuff like that as well. And it okay. didn't. So be very careful me. how low a calorie we are. <laughs> yeah, right 1,700 so, is, if, yeah. You, if you got more than 15 pounds to lose and you're at 1,700 calories. It's and like, you're working out and you're doing that activity on the weekend. Yeah, so think about, think long term, right? So, okay, so mm -hmm. you cut down to 17 and that brings you, you know, 10 pounds down. And now you got to cut mm -hmm. even more, right? So look long term, ultimately you may end up around 1,100 calories. And now you got to eat, mm -hmm. you know, 1,200, 1,300 calories to maintain your body weight. That might be... A, a not so sustainable approach. So I would, I it's okay to be on a cut right now, but I would alternate that with periods of building the metabolism. Give yourself time because you want to end up in a place where you get to that body weight where you feel good, it's healthy, and you can eat an amount of food that's like reasonable. It's reasonable, you know, where where you can enjoy yourself sometimes and have dinner with your your spouse or your partner, or you can go out on vacation, not worry about gaining a bunch of weight type of deal. So take your time. And don't be so aggressive with the cut because 1,700 calories now with more than 1,500 pounds, uh, 1,500, uh, 15 calories to lose. 15 pounds. Sorry, 15 pounds to lose. That's going to, if you stay on that track, you may end up too low. In fact, I would get your metabolism okay. a little higher before. I, I'm glad we're, I'm glad we're having this conversation because the mm -hmm. way this started, uh, you rattled off a bunch of things you're doing. Sal commended you, said you're doing great. Then I asked where you're at calorie wise. Then we yeah. get a better idea where you're at weight wise. Now this conversation changes. This is why this is mm -hmm. so nuanced and it isn't so black and white of like, oh, mind pumps anti-cardio or oh, we're all sudden. So <laughs> this is why this conversation is so important and why, you know, it's it's there's more details that we need. And what I'm learning right now is I'm listening to you communicate everything that you got going on. If you were my client. I wouldn't want you doing all that activity on the weekends or I would make you bump your calories because our goal right now, if your main goal is to get down to this weight and it's more than 15 pounds, we got to go and you're already at 1700 calories. Yep, yep. I can already foresee the future for us and it's, it's not looking bright. It's looking, we have to go very low and put you at a place you're not going to want to sustain for the rest of your life. And ultimately, the thing that the conversation would go like this, I would say to you, I'd say, Haley, is your goal just to get down that weight and then we're going to put the weight back on? Or do you want to get down that weight and maintain it for the rest of your life? And I know the answer. I, right? Yeah, maintain it. That's the main goal, which is always, I was, 
uh, to be honest, I was always worried about that because other trainers are like, you need to be in a cut, a cut, a cut. And no. I'm just like, if I go too low, I'm not gonna be able to do what I love, which then is counterproductive. Cause that's right. Why that's, am I doing it? That's right. So, <laughs> so, uh, you know, I think we, I don't know if you, did you ever hear the episode we did? Why, why, why women should bulk? I think was the name of it. Did you, mm-hmm. did you listen to that episode? I'll be honest. So I didn't know about you guys a couple months ago. I started listening when I heard Sal talk on the Model Health Show, which I've been listening to for a few years. And then I I found you guys and then I've been listening ever since. So I, I haven't heard that one. Okay. So I want you to listen to that episode because that's very important. It's to titled women. Why Women Should Bulk. We'll yes. get the episode number for and, you. And, and now my advice okay. changes for you. I, I would want you to do that. I would want you to stay focused on building muscle right now. And I would want to to leave all these other uh, cardio activities that you enjoy doing in our back pocket as a way for me to go, all right, Haley, you know what? We're doing great. We're up to 2,400 calories. Now, instead of us cutting calories, let's introduce that cardio on the weekends that you love doing and let's start making that a part of your life. And then let's see how your body responds to that. that that's how I would introduce that into your training routine. Okay. Yeah. We would be focused on building muscle right now. Okay, so stop doing my my stuff on the weekends and then focus on building muscle, but start doing kind of maybe, more calories and maybe, then maybe, introduce maybe, those back. Maybe scale it back because I don't know. How, have you been doing that okay. consistently for a while now? Uh, yeah, basically all, all summer long. Well, but, look, okay. here, here's the other side. Like, if you really love it and you really enjoy it um, and mm-hmm. it's not beating you up, you can keep doing it. You just got you to bring your calories up. We got, we got to okay. put you in a place where we're building. Now, it, could that weekend stuff hinder this building process? It depends. It could. And so what Adam's doing is he's basically telling you like the best, most the, the most effective route. The only challenge to that would be if you said, man, I really love what I do on the weekend. Like it's so enjoyable. It's such it's a great- adhering to it. I, yeah. would just, I would just modify what yeah. it is. I would just say, I would want to get like, let's, let's say you love getting out and doing that. I wouldn't want to take you from that. I just say, go for a walk, go for a nice a moderate hike instead. Instead of doing something more in, like mountain biking's kind of intense, like that's a, that's a bit intense. <laughs> yeah, and so and she has yeah. trail running up there, too, right? And so. trail running can be a bit intense. Uh, go for hikes. Get outdoor. Go for a swim. Go for a hike. Go walk. Go walk with some friends. Like that. I, I don't mm-hmm. want to like rob you of. I mean, that would be silly of me to do that. But I, what I don't want is high intensity cardio activity while I'm also trying to reverse diet and bulk you. Like that's our primary goal right now is to build muscle, to speed your metabolism up. The, the cardio on the weekends it, it, it is, is a conflicting signal is not helping us. Mm-hmm. But I also recognize that you enjoy that activity. So I don't want to rob that of you. I just want to modify it. I want to go, let's back off the intensity on it. Still get out there. Go for a nice long walk and go do some things like that. I'm all for that. But I don't want you pushing. I don't want you pushing yeah, the body. Yeah, don't make it a workout. That's right. That's it. So so go ahead, and, okay. go ahead and stay with your activity. But I, I would like us to start increasing our calories and be more focused on getting strong in the gym. That's going to benefit you. The episode is fifteen sixty five. Why women should bulk, okay. yeah. and I think it, it, it'll, I think it'll it'll resonate. The message will resonate with you. You get a better understanding of why I'm giving the advice I'm giving right now. But um, I think that's okay. important. Yeah. So where I'm eating 1,700 calories, I need to progressively get up higher. So does that mean like every week I need to add like 100 calories or? Is, if you, if is, you 17 having, is 1,700 having you lose weight or is that your maintenance? Um, it's, I'm dropping it, but dropping it really slowly. So where were you at before you started dropping it? Um, I was around 2,000. Okay. I'd, I'd bring wow. it right. I'd bring it back to two thousand. Yeah. So bring it back to what okay. you what you had it before you you started to cut. Keep it there for a little bit, and make your focus strength. Can I get stronger? Can I lift more? Can my <laughs> form and technique get better? I'm gonna do this too, Haley. So the the resistance training revolution has some good basic workouts in there, but I'm gonna send you, uh, I'm gonna send you another program. I'm gonna send you Map Starter. I think that's a great program. Okay. You can jump right into it. And it's even uh, though I'm currently doing anabolic, just stop oh, anabolic well, right no, now. You're, and no, you're started. good. No, you're good. Actually, stay with Maps Anabolic. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. You're good. You're good. <laughs> yeah, we'll keep you there. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, you're all set. So I appreciate you calling in. Yeah, check back with us. L- listen to that episode. We address a lot of good points in there and kind of where your mindset should be as you're going through this process. Okay, I will. Yeah, thank you guys. You got it. All right. Thanks, Haley. Okay. Thanks. 
Oh boy, I'm glad you asked that question. I, you know, I just, just I shifted. Just yeah, because that made a, itch. I had a feeling, dude. Yeah, because once a, you asked that, I was like, oh wait a minute, let's see what's where we're at here because it's not going to give her too much. But room. it was good because it what was good was the for the audience to hear you commend someone for doing those things, and we're not anti that. But then no. when you get more information and you find out somebody is that's right north of 15 20 pounds they need to lose and they're already down to 1700 calories and they're already training three days a week strength training plus trigger sessions plus activity on the weekend she's got she's still got a ways to go and inevitably what's going to happen is we will have to reduce calories from that place mm -hmm. and then she's going to be at a place of 1400 or less calories doing five to seven days a week of activity like yeah, it's not, very, not very sustainable it's not sustainable yeah it just isn't and so yeah. the and by the way she is normal she is the average person this is and this is why the message of us always talking about cardio and the the, the negative effects of it is because of this because i think she falls in the category of most people it's not the person who's, you know, if she said she was eating 2,800 calories, then we would have said, change nothing. Yeah. You're doing great. Yeah. Keep doing your activity on the weekend. Or if she, like, didn't, if she, if she had like five pounds to go down. Right. Yeah. Or that. Yeah. Oh, I just want to drop about five pounds, you know, something like that. Okay. Well, I think we're okay then. Yes. But if you have, you know, she had more than 15 to go, that's going to take a little while. I mean, mm -hmm. at the fastest, it's going to take you, and this is if you're just buzzing, you're like, you know, that's what, two, three months. Uh, and so your calories, her calories are going to end up at 1,200. You know, there's not much room, not much room with that. Next caller is Scott from California. Scott, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Um, so I'm a firefighter for the city of Sacramento, and I recently started uh, anabolic. But with my schedule, uh, I work a forty. I work forty eight hours, and then I have ninety six hours off. And I'm trying. How do I fit anabolic into my schedule, where I, you know. Because basically, when I'm at work for two days, there's no way I can, yeah. you know, find an hour, hour and a half to work out. I can barely squeeze in like half hour sometimes. Did you, Scott, did you hear the episode we did for you guys? No, I didn't. We did an episode specific for you guys. It's called First Responders. Yeah, Doug? I think yeah. it was a First Responders episode. Yeah, I'm gonna look it up. So I think it's. Yeah, okay. I think well, it's, I'll have Doug look it up right now. Um, so what I would say with this, Scott, is uh, when you look at the workouts, um, I it's you can break them up yeah. and do them as in they're chunks. appropriate for you. We talk about that in the episode. Yeah. So yeah. so if you yeah. have like a like a phase one, you know, foundational workout, and you can you only have thirty minutes to do some of it, do that portion, save the rest for the next time that you have the ability to work out. And of course, you need to judge whether or not it's appropriate for you to work out based on your sleep and how you feel. Because I know you guys go through periods of like where you don't get no sleep, you are up all night. And then there's periods where you're at the station and you've got more time and nothing's really going on type of deal. So yeah. I would, I, so I, you got to judge it that way and okay. do the workout and then just mark where you finished. We're okay. I got to stop right here. So what I have left, and now I'm at shoulder press. So the next workout, the next opportunity, you bring you you finish the workout there, and it's totally fine. It's totally fine to do it that way. We we get into in the episode is uh, 1487. The best way for first responders to stay in shape, and we actually okay. give we give uh, s a several different options in that, if I recall. Like a, one of them was the option that uh, Sal just said, and then we talked about different programs of ours, how we would run them, how would we mm -hmm. program, and so that's a great episode. It was literally created for you guys specifically because this was a very popular question we used to get. So make sure you check that episode out. Yeah, and then Scott, okay. uh, Scott, uh, because I I love uh, what you guys do for. Are living so much. I want to send you a free program. Uh, I really would yep. like to send you MAP Suspension because uh, this will allow you to have the ability to do exercises and workouts at home with a suspension trainer. So just to add another awesome. level of convenience uh, to help you stay consistent. Yeah, that'd be great. So I know I was wondering, should I, so, you know, the two days, should I, like the, should I do a hit? Because I, I've just got your hit, uh, MAPS hit too. Should I do that maybe for one of the days and break it up that way or just... You can. I I would prefer you follow one program at a yeah. time, because okay. we, yeah, we didn't we didn't write Maps Anabolic or Maps Hit with other programs uh, in mind in the sense that people are all doing them at the same time. When we write a okay. program, it's that program. So ideally, you do one full program, and so do what you know, kind of do what I said, where you're you're doing some of the workout, and then oh, I got to stop here. Right. At, you know, I got to stop at bicep curls, and I'll I'll, I'll continue this workout the next time I can train. MAP suspension, the reason why I like that a lot is because the full workouts are relatively short 
It's a suspension trainer, and I'm sure there's going to be opportunities or times, I should say, where you you don't even have time to get access to equipment, but you got a suspension trainer you can fit in your trunk. You could hook yeah. it up right away and do 20 minute workout. Well, actually, that, luckily enough, we have we have a uh, suspension trainers at our at our firehouses, so that's perfect. Oh, I figure, nice! I figure very nice, and all especially because right. you work in California, you guys save our lives out out there at the the. Looks like we have fires all the time now. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. it's crazy. Yep. Um, I have a, a follow up question too. So I have a, a bulging disc at T five, and what would be an alternative exercise to like back squats or overhead press? Okay. And then. Yeah, are deadlifts, are they going to hurt me? Or I know back squats hurt me, and I know I can't really do anything overhead right now. So do uh, are, are deadlifts kind of recommended, or should I try something else for that too? You know what's interesting about mm. about bulging discs is if you, if you were to take 100 people and image them, you would find a, a good percentage of them with bulging discs, and then a good percentage of them with no symptoms, and some with symptoms. And then you would see people who have uh, nothing at all and have pain. It's very interesting, okay? So there's a huge individual variance with this kind of stuff. Now, you've already identified a couple exercises that just do not work for you, in which case yeah. I would say don't do them. So for back squats, you could do front squats. Uh, you could do uh, lunges, Bulgarian, Bulgarian split stand squats. Stance, yeah. Those are all good. Overhead presses. I would look at lateral raises, front raises, but what I would try to do with, so the problem with overhead press is that's a functional movement. So really try to figure out a way to get yourself to be able to do those without pain. I don't mean force yourself, but find yeah. correctional exercises and stretches and movements that allow you to start moving in that overhead position with very, very light weight. So you could build it because it's such a, it's a functional move. You need to be able to reach overhead. Yeah. 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 Is it I just know I, I can't use a bar. Okay. If I if I, I I've been doing it actually, I'll do one arm, and yeah. that seems. Oh, that's to what work. I was going to suggest. If it yeah, if you felt any pain with dumbbells with just one arm. Oh, there you go. Or you even like seated and supported. Uh, okay. You know, in that position with dumbbells, I mean, at least if you're getting that kind of resistance for overhead, that's a that's a staple movement that you need to to keep and maintain. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, man. And then what about deadlifts? Like, because I, I I really haven't done deadlifts in a long time and it i don't know i would do i, I would like you to do them i would like you to do them but we would just the con the conversation you and i would have if you were a client would be uh focused on form and slowing down and all technique yeah, like i would light. yeah i don't want yeah. you pushing i don't want you pushing the weight and risking form breaking down like form becomes extremely but I, the the benefits of b deadlifting when you have a bulge disc like that can be tremendous which is sounds counter to what you would hear from like your your general practitioner right? your doctor your doctor would be like, oh god you have a bulge disc stay away from those things well the truth is your core wraps around your spine and supports it and nothing is going to stabilize and strengthen your core like deadlifts uh, uh, that like that. So th the idea of you ignoring it or uh, doing something instead of it, I, I would prefer us doing it just with caution, you know, like, hey, let's just really get really, really good with the form and technique and slow the reps down. And so I, I would want you to do it, but I also would be with you. So I'd get to see that. Yeah. So, uh, that, and, that's the only thing. And you said it's a T it's up in the uh, thoracic area, right? You said T4 yeah, or T5? T5, T5, right? T5, thoracic five. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, you know, you got that stabilization you're going to build with deadlifts up in that area and that up the kind of upper mid back area with the scapula. I, I would just, you're going to, it's all about perfect form, mm -hmm. stay super stable, and I wouldn't exaggerate any movements like rows. I wouldn't exaggerate up, you know, overhead presses. Slowly work your way into full range of motion, perfect form. You could be very cautious. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with being very cautious. And what'll end up yeah. happening is you'll end up developing muscle recruitment patterns that are going to work around, not just around your injury, but it will support it and prevent it from getting any worse, and maybe even make it. Uh, a lot better. At least that's been my experience. So Scott, far. I want to give you some more stuff. Yeah. I'm going to give you, uh, I want Doug to give you MAPS Prime. I want you to do zone one, zone two, zone three test. There's a test in there. I also, yeah, I, okay. Oh, have you done it? Are you got it? Yeah, I failed everything. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> I failed all three zones. Okay. Failed it all. okay. So yeah. the, the, the movements in there, I think uh, the fortification sessions and stuff, the, this, this might, and I know Sal gave you the suspension trainer to kind of, 
introduce and have you do some of that. I actually would like you doing more fortification stuff on the times that that's another uh, that's a great that idea. you have like 15, 20 minutes or whatever like that. I would love that because we we want to get okay. to a place like my goal for you would be to get to a place that we can squat, we can deadlift comfortably, we can overhead press comfortably. We recognize we can't right now. We recognize mm -hmm. we fail all the tests, but that's what those fortification sessions are. Those become your best friend. Like that's yeah. your go to when you got a little bit extra time, a little extra energy. Uh, do those workouts uh, to, to the work. Or you can brace and get rigid and, you know, have control over that and, and keep reinforcing yeah. that kind of pattern. You know, the, the better we're going to be when we keep adding load uh, eventually as we go up. Okay. All right. Cool. Um, I don't know if I got time for one more question, but what, do you, what supplements do you guys use for recovery? Oh, cause I'm, I'm old, I'm 50. So I need to, I need every, I need to pull every trick out of the hand, but you know, both better. <laughs> I mean, if your protein intake is adequate, you're getting good sleep, yeah. uh, creatine will help a recovery. Ashwagandha, you know, an adaptogen, you might get some benefit. Rhodiola, you might get some benefit, maybe a little bit of a stimulant effect from that. But you're not going to yeah. get a huge effect from supplements. Um, it's, it's mostly going to be about sleep yeah. and proper intensity. And what you're, what you're going to find is as you get older, you're just going to have to modify the intensity uh, a little bit more. That's that's and and your job is is quite demanding or can be quite demanding. So I would uh, I, it's all about mon managing the intensity and you'll get great results. So you're still within the age of being able to get great PRs, great results. I mean that that doesn't really start to you don't really have to start issues with that until you get into your 60s. I know guys that hit PRs in their 50s. So uh, but it's going to be about ma managing and monitoring the intensity and the sleep. That's nothing's going to touch that. Scott, you ever uh, you ever play with cold plunge? You ever do ice or baths? No, therapy? for that. Like, oh, well, actually, I, I've done cryo a little bit, but it's been a while. Since I, I mean, I, I mean, th that'll bring down the inflammation real quick. Plus, I think there's some carryover to that type of training for you too, just into what what you do for a living. So, um, yeah, and it's free, right? Uh, other than it's getting some ice and throwing it in a bathtub or whatever like that, it's not it's not it's not something that expensive. Um, I would I would try to include some of that into your life. See how you feel from that. Okay. Cool. Yep. All right, man. Thanks for calling in, Scott. All right. Thank you. Very demanding schedule. I just I have a, a friend I just um, started hanging out with who's a firefighter, and he kind of explains the schedule. Very similar, right? He's in California yeah. also. And I'm like, is it like, what's it like? You know, and he's like, either nothing or, or it's crazy. All go. Yeah, yeah, all the time. Yeah. And it's like, it's really hard to get on any kind of a regular schedule because you get back from a, a, a where you were putting out literal fires. Mm -hmm. You ain't working out that day, the day after. You got you that whole day after you got to rest and, and but, recover. yeah that day after a lot of times is just trying to recuperate and, yeah. and and get get your bearings back. He's a tough. He's a type of client that I wish like I I had like so I could because you know the things that we told like go ahead you know stop the squatting go to Bulgarian squats oh do the dumbbell presses yeah. or the over press. But th this is stuff that we could fix, dude. Like, this is stuff that we could get to the bottom of it and start addressing. I mean, how many clients did you guys have with bulging discs? Yeah, right. It was common. Probably like 20, 30%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that, I mean, that's when it, And, of course, the the safe, smart, professional answer is for us to say, hey, let's, you know, do this instead of that. But if you were my client, like, I would want to get to the, the, the root cause of this. I would want to work on it. And then my programming would even shift on, like, like right now, and even that episode and the advice we give is, like, it's kind of around building muscle and losing body fat and, like, how to keep this routine up. But really, like, I would be like, listen, we, yeah. we want to get to a place where you can lift a barbell over your head. We want to get to a place where you can comfortably squat. So now actually my programming, I actually care less about having a full hour. Or like when we're doing movements, it is to, to get better at that, yeah. to get to a place where we can do that. So, Anywhere we can reinforce and bulletproof your joints, your back, like, you know, this kind of stuff, that's the utmost importance. Yeah. And people think that you're going to take this massive step back or I'm not going to be able to get in shape that way. No, we're still doing strength exercises. You know, we're still moving. We're still working. It's just we have a, a, a different goal right now because once we get to that place where you can back squat, you can. I've had clients with bulge discs deadlifting 400 pounds, dude. Yeah. So you can you can get to you that. You know how many point. people have bulge discs yeah. and, and, and they have no symptoms? And then people with symptoms who have nothing wrong with their discs? Yeah. Not saying it's a, you know, obviously it can be an issue, but yeah. it's actually quite common. There is and a variance there for sure. There is. And if you strengthen and stabilize the spine, I mean, you, you, you I've, I've seen lots. I've had lots of clients. I've had doctors with bulging discs who through training were like, man, I feel like there's nothing wrong anymore. Our next caller is Jake from California. Jake, what's happening, man? How can we help you? Hey, how's it going, guys? How you doing? Good. All right. 
Hey, so first off, obviously, I appreciate all the things you guys do. All the content you guys put out there for free is incredible um, and higher quality than most of the content that people charge for. So uh, appreciate that. Um, in terms of my question, so I retired from football probably about five years ago, uh, hung up my cleats, played at a pretty high level for about a third of my life. And my playing size was about 270 pounds at six foot six. Um, and now at this point in my life, I'm trying to transition to stay competitive, want to stay in the competitive scene. And I want to go to beach volleyball. Obviously the size difference is pretty immense. Um, look at most players playing. You got, you know, legends like Phil Dahlhauser who plays at six foot nine, 200 pounds flat. And I'm just wondering what is the safest, most effective way to lose the weight, but maintain the strength that I've built, um, as well as increase mobility, uh, just keep some pressure off my joints and just extend the longevity of a career. Yeah. Wow. That's a great question. Yeah, a transition. I'm um, actually, this is going to be a fun one. So, you know, there's a challenge with, there can be a challenge with guys like you, Jake, because, um, because he knows nothing about sports. <laughs> no, I know. you know, you know what the challenge put is the ball uh, over the net. It, a lot of people, a lot of people won't get this, uh, but you, uh, you, you, you built a lot of muscle and you kept it for a long time, right? You played at a high level and it's going to be hard to lose some of that. Believe it or not. We have a friend, uh, Ben Pikulski, professional bodybuilder. And he was trying, he was literally trying to lose muscle. He was a pro bodybuilder trying to lose muscle. He was talking about how hard it was because his Couldn't body was it. just holding on to it. And I can't identify with this because I, I probably, I lose muscle just by talking about it. I think I just lost a couple pounds right now on this podcast, but so it's going to be kind of tough. So what you got to balance out is the performance and the size goals because, you know, bigger guys sometimes can move really, really well because their strength to weight ratio is so incredible. Uh, and I'm sure you've experienced this uh, playing professional sports. There's some guys so big, and, you, and they're, but they're so strong for their size that they move like somebody that's much lighter. So that's the thing you want to weigh out. Um, you want to kind of you know weigh that on the scale. As far as the weight loss is concerned, this is going to be it's all diet. Yeah, nutrition. This is going to be all diet. You got yeah. You would have to cut your calories. I would keep your protein intake high, um, and and it's going to be a balance between fat and carbohydrates. You you got you know cutting carbs is is for some people an easier way, but the problem with that is. You may notice some re some declines in performance and endurance from doing that. So it's it, and this is quite individual. You know, some people need more carbs than other. I would start to balance that out while cutting calories and just seeing how you feel and and, and take your time with something like this. Are you are you on a time frame? Do you have like a, a set date that you need to lose weight by? No, no, no. That's that's actually a huge reason why I switched. Why I'm looking at volleyball because you look at guys like Jake Gibb who's 45 years old still playing in the in the Olympics. So I, I'm 28. I got time. I'm not okay, in any cool. type of rush. I got. I want, that's why I want to call you guys and do this the right way. I I love nice. uh, Maps performance yeah. and a calorie deficit. I just think that it's perfect for you. Uh, it's so mobility focused. So you yeah. make the, the the point about reinforcing those joints and. I mean, and you losing the weight is de you're gonna feel you're gonna feel better, lighter. I mean, we it, have so you run any of our programs, by the way? I'm doing maps performance right now. Actually, you are. Oh, oh perfect. Perfect. dude, yeah, perfect. that in a, in a calorie deficit is gonna be. And then I would follow that up with map symmetry. I was yeah. gonna say symmetry. I probably would have done before, but yeah, I think maps performance right now is a perfect answer to that. Uh, along with managing your calories appropriately. I, be be realistic with yourself, though. I mean, we're trying to drop down, you know, 30, 40 pounds, right? It, you are going to get weaker, but who cares? You know what I'm Especially saying? Especially if your strength if your strength to weight ratio is really good. Yeah, yeah. So you're, you're, but you could, I mean, you potentially could stay the same or strong. I don't know where you're currently at, but that dropping that much weight is kind of inevitable. We're going to probably lose some muscle along the way, but that's okay, dude. Like you, You've got plenty to go, and and I would be doing mass performance and playing my sport, playing volleyball. Now, yeah. there's one other thing, Jake. On your on what you wrote to us, uh, mm -hmm. you're you're so you're 270 around 25 percent body fat. Is that correct? Last time I measured, and that's that's with calipers. I don't know if I'm doing that completely correctly, but uh, that's that's the last measurement I have. Okay, so here's what's cool about that is that you can actually drop a lot of body fat. Uh, and I mean, technically not need to lose a lot of muscle, if any at all, to get down to your goal weight of about 240. You know, yeah, if, if I'm yeah, doing the math right, getting you down 10% should bring you, should bring you 20, 30 pounds lower of just body fat. Um, yeah, if I'm doing idea. the math right, I think I'm, I think I'm doing that right. So you, you've got some room with body fat percentage where you can, you can walk 
you know, you you could play at 15% body fat, which is good athletic body fat to be at. I mean, I know some some players are even, even lower than that, but you could get down 10% body fat and hold on to a lot of muscle and get your body weight close to to your goal. About what that looks like for someone like you is Sal made the point keeping your protein intake high and actually not losing fast. So since we do have time, you're not in a rush on this. We got all the time in the world. If you want to be uh, as lean, as strong, and just just try and drop the body fat to get to a, then the, the move would actually be to do this very slowly. So still the same protocol, follow MAPS performance, play your sport, yeah. but don't don't let yourself drop seven, eight pounds in a week on the scale. Like move it. You don't want to move that fast. You want to be either one, almost staying the same weight for a while, but doing all the things we're saying. Uh, or very, very slowly dropping weight on the scale, very slowly. Make sure you're also priming continuously, especially like ankle mobility, hips, and shoulder. I mean, that's going to be crucial. Yeah, I've actually been doing the uh, knees over toes guys programs on the mobility days. For oh, beautiful. Oh, Rad. He's Big. awesome. Yeah, so, uh, great yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah. that's it, man. Any other questions for us? No, that was about it. I don't want to take up too much of your time. I appreciate the time you've already given me, so I really appreciate it, guys. No, excellent, man. Thanks for calling in. Keep, yes, us, uh, keep us posted, man. I can't wait to hear how this goes. Yes, sir. We'll do. You got it. Boy, some people are just so athletic. They can go from one sport to another. Yeah. yeah. Pro level. I mean, when you, <laughs> when you reach, when you reach that level of any sport, I think that that's yeah. pretty true, right? There's very few pro athletes that can't make the, I mean, you may not, you may not be a pro football player than be a, a pro well, baseball player, but you could probably pay baseball than most people. A lot of them were the, multi-sport players in high school and then they, they specialized yeah. and then went because it, it, and it's the thing is like, especially in the football realm, it was like, you knew a lot of them could play basketball. They could play baseball, you yeah. know, and they're just as yeah. effective. And I, you know, and doing the, doing the math uh, again, 270, 25%. That's like, what is that? 60 You're right. he could, pounds he could, he of body fat. He could drop fat. like 25 pounds. He, it, it, if just, that's right. Just pure body fat. Right? Yeah, yeah, and go down like ten yeah. percent, and uh, and and be okay, and keep his body, keep a lot of his muscle. Now he still will lose some strength. There's something interesting about being at higher body fat percentage when it comes to like total like, strength. Well, and also he be, might lose some strength. Well, and say. also being in a calorie deficit. That's it. There right? you go. So yeah. the combination of the two of those, uh, he's gonna. That's why I wanted to prepare him for that, like not to get hung up on that. But you're right. I think if he does it slowly, he could he could definitely He'd just be leaner. Yeah, for sure. Look, if you like our show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find all of us on social media. So Justin is on Instagram at Mind Pump Justin. Adam is on Instagram at Mind Pump Adam. And you can find me on Twitter at Mind Pump Sal. This one's really important, and that is to phase your training. If somebody trains for a full year doing a bench press, and they're always aiming for five reps, if you compared that person to a person who did bench press where they did three or four weeks of five reps, but then they did three or four weeks of 12 reps and then three or four weeks of, let's say, 15 to 20 reps, and then they'll throw in some supersets. At the end of that year, you're going to see more consistent progress from the person who's moving in and out and less injury. That's another thing. You'll see less injury as well.